for those of you who don't know me, I just kind of wanted to give you a little background um, and kind of tell you how I've gotten to the place that I am right now, coming from here. Because um, it's been kind of a rocky ride all the way through. It's um, been very strange um, and um, very blessed and very lucky. Um, so I, I just kind of wanted to talk about how how you go from a program like this where you are not around arts all the time, how you're not around um, a major theatrical center or, or art center even for that matter, and how you take that and you go from here and you and you make a career for yourself. Um, and, and so I just wanted to kind of talk about how I did it so that, that way maybe that will lead into some good discussions and, and we can talk about it from there. So, um, right now, I am, I am currently a grad student at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Um, it's about three and a half hours um, from Chicago. Um, I actually came to the school as a technical director um, in the area of scenic technology. I am now um, doing my own thing um, at the end of last semester they had promised to suspend the scenic technology program. So I, in essence, I proposed a new curriculum that this is what I want to do, this is what I think is important. Um, a much more interdisciplinary approach, um, very uh, technology-centered, very design-centered, very art-centered. And that was what I wanted to do, that's what I proposed. I basically told them, this is what I want to do, I'm going to I'm going to leave, and they said, okay, well, let's see what we can do. And so this year, I'm starting down that path that we were calling it tentatively the Dynamic Stage Environment Study. Um, so, in case you can't tell, it, it, it's all about how do we create an environment on stage. It's not just like scene design, it's not just lighting design, it's not just sound design, it's not just smell design. It's all about like putting it all together and creating this new world that we can actually interact rough shot portfolio. Um, really, this is what got me to the University of Illinois. So it doesn't really include anything that I've done since. Um, and we can talk about that stuff a little bit later. But um, this is actually going to be a little bit backwards, so bear with me. Um, what ended up happening was um, last year I came to the University of Illinois um, by way of New York City. Um, I spent the last year in New York City working at an off-Broadway house called the Atlantic Theatre Company. Um, if anybody has ever heard of it, um, it was founded by David Mamet and William H. Macy. Um, really cool place. Um, a lot of really interesting people go through there. You know, I, I would be working in the theater and um, you were like, how do I know this guy just standing behind me? And then you realize that, you know, he was Jesus and the Big Lebowski. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, so now I know who's that. Um, um, so that was an interesting experience, but there, I, while there, I got to work with quite a few cool people. Um, these are actually photos from my, um, because I was working as a jet crew chief and an automation technician um, for these shows. Um, and this is for The Cripple of Inishma uh, by Martin McDonough. Um, this was the Druid Theatre Company that's actually based out of Ireland, came and, and did the show um, with us, along with Martin Kane, um, and Martin McDonough is really cool. He, he's actually doing a project right now with um, Tom Waits and uh, Robert Wilson. Anybody, I'm throwing some names out there. So if you guys know who I'm talking about, like, that's, it's going to be really cool. If anybody wants to go to Paris next summer, I'm, I'm all up for it. Um, anyway, so this is just kind of some photos. This was what my focus was before I came, um, working on how to make computers drive scenery. So this is uh, the setup. We had a counter that raised and lowered out of the floor, and it was all computer operated. So you basically have a queue set up on your computer, and, and it was making it um, raise and lower. Um, so before New York City, I'll talk a little bit more in depth as, after we go through that. Before New York City, I worked at the Santa Fe Opera, year-round carpenter. Um, got a lot of training in, in how to build massive sets. 
um, how to how to make them work, how to, how to run them off of air, um, like how to run them hydraulically, pneumatically, um, computer driven, electronic driven, um, and learn how to do all of that. This is actually a brewing wall. You can't really see this is a back view, but as it came on stage, it actually raised, you know, would raise in height. Um, it had to fit through a door on the side, so that was, became this beautiful moment of like a window coming through the door. Um, this was kind of a baby. It was actually a set of uh, plexiglass walls, so their walls just like completely made out of plexiglass, um, so they looked like crystal whenever they rolled out on stage. And you, you can barely see, but it's a great picture. It up here, it's a uh, full molding, all out of clear plastic. Um, it, it was quite a project. Yeah. It took me about two and a half months to build the wall, so definitely my baby. Um, the same show, there was this beautiful kind of wave deck with flowers all over it. Um, I'm really sorry, guys. You guys are more than welcome to look at the actual hard copy that you know, that I want to. Um, because these pictures are really bad, I thought they were going to show up a little better. Um, but this is basically uh, Madame Yves also at the Santa Fe Opera. Huge curved wall, learning how to do different shapes um, rather than just a flat, uh, a flat, flat. Flat, flat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> learn how to build some machinery. Um, you can't really see. Um, for one of my projects there was building a vacuum form machine. I want one of those. You what? I said I want one of those. Will you come build us one? Um, I'll work on it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Yeah, they're really interested in projects. Does anybody know what vacuum forming is? Yeah, I know you do. But does anybody else know what vacuum forming is? Some um, of them have probably heard a, me talk about it. There's a big sheet of plastic. You heat it up. You have a mold on the bottom. And then you basically form the plastic to the mold. So you get, it's how they make um, three-dimensional signs for businesses, things like that. Um, but we use it a lot. The detail on the plexiglass walls was actually made with this machine. Um, I made stuff for myself, like a <laughs> smoker. Um, I was very proud of it, so of course I had to my portfolio. Um, okay, so before Santa Fe, um, I actually, I actually came to Santa Fe from Alaska. Um, in case you can't tell, I've been everywhere in the past few years. But before that, I was in Alaska, um, and I was working at a small company there, um, working as a technical director, um, an associate technical director, and a carpenter um, in the company, as well as a put the book away. As well as a, as a scene and lighting designer for their small second stage space. Um, and then, of course, now we're getting other. This is almost Western, so some of you guys will remember some of it, yes, yes, yes. Um, and this was uh, <laughs> one of my favorite shows we did um, while I was in Alaska. It was called Raven Odyssey. Um, and it was a, we took all the, the Raven creation tales um, from the um, Alaskan clan and created a play around um, their story. And so we took all the different clans in, uh, in the state and they each contributed their own story of Raven um, raven, eagle, whale, um, it, it, was, it was a really cool project. Um, learned a whole lot about native cultures today. Um, and these are some of the things I didn't design while I was there. Um, this question of mercy. Um, I'm just gonna run through these because the photos don't really do them justice. But this, um, this was here, if anybody remember the sick one? Just like um, A couple more designs that I did here. Uh, uh, my regular artwork, it'll all be in the book, you guys can look at it later. So when I left here, I, before, I, I actually applied to a job at the Santa Fe Opera um, as an intern or an apprentice. Um, I got very lucky um, and was accepted to that job. It was probably the hardest job I've ever had in my life. Um, we were working at least 80 hours a week, if not 110 or 120 hours a week of, of pure manual labor, um, running around, like literally we had to run up and down stairs, 
um, if anybody been to the Santa Fe Opera, it's actually four or five levels. Um, so the stage is on one level, there's a trap room on another level, there's the back stage is on a different level, it's lower, and then there's two basement levels. And so we would spend our night, because the show started at, uh, at dusk, um, and so we would run the show from 9 to midnight, and then at like at 12.30 we would start running up and down, we would have to change over from one show to another in about two hours. Um, so we would change from one show to another in two hours, um, clean up, go to bed, get up, have rehearsal the next day at like 10 or 11, and then with one show, take that show off, put another show on for the show that night, and then after the show that night, then we would take it off, put another show on, and do it all over again. And that's what we did all summer. Um, it was, like I said, probably one of the hardest jobs I've ever had in my life. Um, I have no idea how I got to it. Um, but after that, um, I ended up going to a small university in Tennessee. Um, and they promised me the world and didn't give me anything. So I only stayed there for like a month, a month and a half. Um, and ended up going to do an internship in Juneau, Alaska at the First Man's Theater. If anybody knows the First Man's Theater, if anybody knows the play How I Learned to Drive by Paula Bogle, that was created up there. Um, they do a lot of that type of work. They like to workshop on um, specific things. Um, uh, the artistic director, Carol you know, William Yammer. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Molly Smith? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, Molly. She, Molly something. Yeah. yeah. So she, anyway, she's very well known in Washington, D.C. now. Um, and she started that theater, so there's a lot of great ties that go through there. Um, so anyway, I worked there for a year. Um, picked up every job that I can. Um, they had a, the regular main stage season, which I was basically just a carpenter and a TV for. Um, then they had a second stage space where they did experimental theater, and that's where I ended up picking up a couple of extra design credits, um, both in scene design and lighting design. Um, after that, I thought I was done with theater. Um, they didn't pay me anything, and like that was literally $100 a week. $100 a week for my internship. Um, and let me tell you, trying to pay for everything with $100 a week gets really, really hard. Um, but you learn how to eat really, really cheaply. Um, you learn how to have fun for no money. And it's very, very valuable, but regardless, I was done. Um, and I, but I wanted to go back to Santa Fe. Um, I actually loved Santa Fe in itself. I didn't want to do theater anymore, but I wanted to live in the mountains and in the desert. So I ended up traveling all the way back down to Santa Fe, and I ran into the person who hired me first time around, said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm looking for work. Looking for theater work? No, not really. I said, well, there's a carpentry job that's opened up. Maybe you should apply for that. So I ended up applying, got it, loved it, stayed there for a year. Um, totally random happenstance. Um, but in doing that, I realized that it wasn't just that I wanted to be out of theater. I wanted to be doing something more in theater. And I, and I couldn't really figure out what that was. So while I was there, I, um, I tried to get work with a couple of smaller companies. Ended up shadowing a director um, who put on Dow. Dow. Uh, well, he was doing a play Dow this was two years ago. So I actually shadowed the director through that process and kind of learned a little bit about what it was that I wanted. But it wasn't quite, I wasn't quite there yet. Um, so after that, I ended up moving to New York. Um, that was just kind of a, a blind shot. I just knew I needed to get to some place where more was going on. I knew a couple of people who knew a couple of people in New York, and I thought, oh, well, hey, you know, I can fling it. Ended up just being, um, when I got there, it ended up being just someone that just kind of offhandedly was just like, oh, well, maybe you should call Mike Wade over at this place. You know, he usually is working, has some good work for you. Anyway, so I ended up getting on with him. Two days of work turned into three weeks of work. Three weeks of work turned into six months of work. Six months went on. And so one person, I ended up working my way up into one company for a year, going from a regular free
freelance carpenter to being the deck crew chief to running the automation and then actually um, TDing a show at the school um, called Make Me. Um, so that was kind of like really progressing through. But once again, I didn't think I was quite there. I didn't really want to be a, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was kind of related to technical stuff, but it wasn't exactly. So I ended up um, getting a call about the University of Illinois um, in Champaign-Urbana. Um, anybody remember Joe Thompson, Dr. Joe Thompson? Um, he basically gave me a call and said, you know, if you're still interested, then I think this is the real deal. You need to come check it out. Um, I got there, and sure enough, it was the real deal um, in terms of being a technical director. Um, but there was something lacking. And so that puts me into what I just told you about creating my own degree um, and trying to be somewhere in between being a technical director, a designer, and an artist, and trying to make sense of your life in those ways. Um, so right now, um, as of this semester, I, I put up a poetry show um, in February. Um, I basically created a, an installation work, and we did a poetry performance inside of that installation. Um, and it was really fun, it was a headache. It wasn't as good as I thought it could have been, but it turned out all right. Um, and right now, I am designing the Scottish play, um, and I'm kind of excited about it. It's this whole new... None of the designers are set in stone. Like the, the sound designer will be talking to me and be like, I really need big thunder sheets. And they need to just be I'm like, well, the thunder sheets look awesome, right? We should just use those for like set dressing. And then, you know, and then the lighting designer is like, his booms want to look like crosses or whatever. So it's been this really like interactive, um, inner working collaborative model that's been a lot of fun. Um, and the school itself is trying to make sense. So, <laughs> okay, so that's my spiel in terms of how I got to where I am. Um, I could talk in depth about any number of places I've been. Um, I, could, I could tell you about the school and the program I'm doing, what I think about art, but I would really rather have you guys ask some questions so I kind of have a sense of where you guys want to go and what you guys think about where you're going and what you can do with this degree. Then we can have a conversation based on that. So does anybody have, have a place that you guys want to start? Or, I mean, if you want me to kind of tell you what I think about what you do. Okay, so okay, for Jeff, so that we can hear it. Layout. 
layout stuff that's like really fast and easy. Um, actually, Wix.com, um, W-I-X.com. Um, it's a Flash-based site, so everything you do grows and changes, and it's really neat. It's free, um, and you, I believe you can buy a domain for like thirty dollars a month. So, um, but that's super easy. There's a whole lot of other choices, but that would be a really simple place to start. Um, I showed you my portfolio, um, and like I said, it's really rough, and it's, and it's definitely not for um, any kind of artistic uh, job. So you really need to pay attention to that, because especially if you want to be a designer, you have to understand that the first thing they're going to see you design is your portfolio. So think about that and really pay attention to it because there's a lot that goes into design. Graphic design, um, layout design, book design, book making, book printing, all that stuff plays into it. It's really, really a big thing to, to tackle. So I understand, I kind of understand your trepidation a little bit. And part of my problem is the programs that I'm applying to are just different than that. That it's hard to know. Especially when I was in Alaska, like it was a totally different kind of vibe than any other place I've ever been. And so you have these people that are trying to get a job, so they're presenting themselves in a way that the theater wants them, only to get there and find out that they're really not the type of person that needs to be there. Um, so what I would say to that is, you said, which one do you want to do? Don't worry about trying to make yourself look more like writing designer, or look more like or look more like stage manager or look more like anything or an actor or whatever, I would say, simply say that try and find a way to present yourself as who you are. What's really important to you? Those are the things you're highlighting. Because it all plays in. Because for me, um, I'm not, I haven't been a designer since I left school. I, I haven't really been a designer. But does that mean I'm not a designer at heart? No. Does that mean that all the things that I've done before this that I do now, the things I do for fun, the books I read, the pictures I look at, um, the websites I peruse, does all this not play into who I am as a designer? Of course it does. And it's more important for somebody to know who I am than it is for them to think that I hold this like magic set of qualities that they need. So that's my answer to you, is, is be prepared to say, be prepared to say, this is why I'm a good designer. But be coming from it because this is where I came from. Not because, not trying to like manipulate the information that you have. I don't know if that helps, but. Um, this is kind of not a different path, but how, how did um, the support of like your family and friends play into your career and, and how you got there? I mean, how important was that? Well, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, I mean, because the unfortunate thing that I would say about the business we're in, you better be strong in your own right. I'm not going to say my family and my friends and everybody hasn't supported me, but when your family's here and you're in Alaska, when your family's here and you're in New York City, when your family's here and you're in Chicago, LA, when you're across the seas, whenever you're in, you have to have a sense of yourself. Now, I'm not saying that your family and friends don't play into it. You're going to make friends wherever you go that are going to support you and be a part of what you do. You're going to find people that you learn from and people that help you and, and can push you down the right path. But for me, for me personally, there were a lot of times that I felt like I was riding this, this wave along. Um, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm, I, that, that's my personality. I, I like 
one-man challenges. I, I, I like to be feeling like I'm the one taking charge of what it is that I'm doing. Um, I feel like it's, that is, to me, the really important thing. I know I, how did my family and friends support me in every way they could. But really, it all came down to me being stubborn and hard-headed and and being determined that I was going to make this happen for me. Um, it's probably not a very satisfying answer. No, no. <laughs> um, but I, I, can, I'll, I, will, I will use that to segue just a little bit, if you don't mind. One of the things that you will always find if you're in this business, and especially if you want to make any kind of living at it, which, I mean, let's face it, I mean, there aren't that many jobs out there. There are more than you think there are. They're just not here. So you're gonna get, you're gonna start looking for jobs when you go out of here, and you're gonna see stuff in like, you know, in the boondocks. You're gonna be like, why would I go to Montana to take on an internship for, you know, four hundred dollars a month? Like, why would I do that to myself? But the truth is, is that at some point you just have to make that decision that keeping moving is the important thing. You're never going to find that perfect job. You're never going to find the perfect company. You're going to have to go someplace and you're going to have to start creating that perfect company. You have to go someplace and become a part of it and create your own thing. Um, and because of that, you never know where it's going to take you. And so that's why I say you sometimes it's it's a, little, it's a little bit hard to rely on anybody else because they always have an idea of where they want you to go. That may not mean that you need to stay here, but you know, my parents were so mad when I said, oh, I'm going to Alaska next week. Because that was literally what it was. It, it was like, I'm done in Tennessee, and I made some calls, and then I called my mom and said, oh, I've, I've decided that I'm taking an internship in Alaska. She said, when are you leaving? Well, I'll be home on Friday, and then I'll leave on Saturday. And this was like a Tuesday. Um, sometimes you have to be prepared to make that kind of decision. You have to be able to just say, you know what, it's everything I know, but I just, uh, whatever, I've got to make the next step. So, I mean, I'm not saying your friends will hold you back from that, but you just got to be careful. And I'm not, I'm not advocating that you don't have friends by any means. I'm just advocating that, that you have <laughs> you, just, you just have a sense of yourself, and that's what's going to get you through, and that's what's really going to be able to, you have to be your own number one fan. So, yeah, so, yeah. anyway, so that's kind of what I have to say. Any other? Um, for you, you said that you went from here, and then you did internships, and then you're on a master. Could you suggest that, doing that, for, instead of just going straight to your master's right out of college, or... Um, yeah, that's kind of a big question because I've heard I've heard every way under the sun, and everyone thinks that that the way they did it was the way the way to do it. I've almost ever heard anybody say, "Well, I did it this way, and I wouldn't do it that way again," which tells me that they must all be okay. I mean, there's obviously nothing horrible about doing it in any which way. Um, for me personally. Um, I much prefer working professionally and then going back to school than going straight from school to school. Um, because my internships led into professional jobs and professional jobs led into freelancing. Um, first of all, it, it's nice to at least have a couple of years where you actually make money. Um, because when you take in grad school, you won't have money like you don't have money when you're an undergrad. So it's kind of nice to have that couple of years of, of like when I was freelancing, it was wonderful because I had money and I could just go do stuff when I wanted to and well, when I had time, <laughs> I could do stuff. So, um, it was very hard, you know, I mean, I worked six days a week. Got off on Mondays. So it's like my only day of the week off was Monday because that's the one day in New York that they don't have shows. Um, but 
But like I said, I mean, it, it all kind of depends. A lot of the people I'm in school with have gone straight from undergrad to, to their graduate program. Um, and then also there's a lot of them that have been working professionally for 20 years and are now back in grad school. Some of those are a little bit harder to deal with because you're going to develop some expectations that when you're out in the professional world that are not going to happen in grad school. That it's going to be a little bit hard. Um, I guess my thing is, is, I don't know that I could say I recommend one way or another, but I do say that you should know, know exactly what it is that you want to get out of it. Um, because that's what I needed, was I needed to go out and work professionally for a little while to understand what it was that I was looking for at the moment. Because, it, you know, when I was here, you know, I was doing everything. You know, I gotta do a little bit of lights and a little bit of sets and a little bit of acting and directing. And, you know, it was great, and I'm still I'm still very much that person. But you're gonna have to make some choices when you go out in the real world. Do you really want to do all of it? Do you want to focus on three of these things? Do you want to focus on one of these things? And I and I don't know that you're gonna be able to answer that through school, through more school. I think I think there's part of you just has to go out there. And you'll figure it out. But on the other hand, if you know for sure, like, I want to be a director, then, you know, okay, go to grad school. If you know for sure that, like, I just could not live if I don't design another show in my life. <laughs> I mean, if you feel that way, then school. Go to school. Go do it. Um, but you have to answer those questions. Because you're going to find when you're on the professional world, if there's anything else that you can do, you're going to want to do. You're not gonna wanna. You're not gonna wanna be in theater. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the 90th hour of your work week, and it's gonna be three o'clock in the morning, and you're arguing with the director about whether something needs to be beige or yellow. <laughs> and you're gonna. Uh, you're gonna blow up, and you're gonna run outside. And go, Why don't I become a waiter? <laughs> so much you're gonna ask yourself that. Don't point. I guarantee you. So, so the trick to it is whenever you wake up the next morning <coughs> that you're not still asking yourself that question. Then you get a little bit of sleep and you can wake up in the morning and go, okay, I, I can do this. I can do this for another day. I can do this for another month. I'm happy to be doing this for the rest of my life. So you just really have some questions to ask yourself about what the answer is. So it's really deeply personal. Um, but like I said, there's really no right answer. Do you find that you're still applying things that you learned here in your professional life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I mean, everything I learned here. Um, I, I'm complimented, I've been complimented several times that I remember of, of my ability to walk into a situation and not only be like, and I had just been building something all day, and then to be able to walk into the situation and understand how the lighting board works. Or right now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a facility manager for a student space, and they have this ridiculous board. It's not made for theater at all. It's made for rock and roll. It uses LED lights. It's horrible, it's horrible. I'll tell you that later. Uh, but, but it, and, and so I have to be able to go in and understand, okay, so this is how you write cues, this is how you talk about light, this is how you make these things happen. Um, and then being able to turn that knowledge in, around and use it in all different facets. Um, one of the things that people don't talk about a lot, and, and I know we do here, and, and I don't know, I don't even remember how explicit it was, but you can't do one thing without understanding the rest. You can't be an actor if you don't understand the show you're in. You can't be a designer if you don't understand what the director is thinking. You can't, you can't light something if you don't understand how the sound is going to affect what's going on on stage. And likewise, you can't run a show if you don't understand the artistic concept behind it. You can't be backstage and be like, oh, I know that I just gotta like move this chair at such and such time, whenever so-and-so says go, and not be like, oh, I know why that chair has to be there. It has to be there for this crucial moment. 
you're going to be flabbergasted at how many people don't understand the whole picture, who do shows over and over and over again, and they don't seem to understand that the world is bigger than how many doors on a set. You're going to see technicians especially, and this is as a technician, like as somebody who works backstage, you're going to hear plenty of those guys who are like, well, this is stupid. Why would we do it this way when we could do it this way? It'd be so much easier and cheaper, and I don't have to waste my time, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, but that two feet that you're moving that trapdoor over is crucial to the story. How can you not understand that? So what I learned here was that everything is related. You can't do one without the other, which I, I will admit that it, it put me in a disadvantage because I can't make up my mind as to what it is I want to do. Um, I still have dreams about acting, and I, and I still want to direct and, um, and design and build and do other projects and rewrite the Oris Daya and like, 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 oh, it's like, why, why can't I just choose one and stay with it? You can be the head professor at a small university. What's that? It's right. <laughs> you can be the head professor at a small university. Please retire yeah. and grant King from But see, then you have we to. We talked about that about 10 years ago. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, and, I'm not, and that's the thing, is I know a lot of people that that's why they want to go to the school. Exactly for that reason. Because you get to do everything. Problem is, it's not that you get to do everything, it's that you have to do everything. <laughs> it's like a big... And then you get the divide. ulcer, and then all that other good stuff. Um, so, so, um, so, yeah, I, I'm constantly doing what I learned here. Um, strangely enough, I mean, I think because of my generalized background is why I'm doing this, this um, interdisciplinary study that I'm doing because I mean most people like are happy to put themselves in a box and say I'm a scene designer like put the blinders on I'm a, I'm a scene designer don't talk to me about light I'll show the lighting design of what I'm building but don't talk to, I don't want I don't, I don't, I don't want to know about the actor's motivation uh -huh. I, don't want to know that. I, I mean there'll be people that'll do that and, and to me, that's like totally not what it is. It's like to hear someone ever say that's not my job in theater makes me just want to <coughs> and be like, no, it's all of our job. We're trying to put up a show. So, to answer your question, absolutely. Absolutely freaking loop. <laughs> Um, the, the people who, who build that stuff. 
Um, so you have to be careful. Um, now, do I think that like you know getting involved with the, with some sort of organization is a bad idea? No, no not at all. Um, I would say that the smart thing to do is, of course, you're going to audition, 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 audition. But you need to just be schooling yourself in every way you possibly can. There, there are hundreds of good schools in the city of classes, dialect coaches. Um, you know, you can go to the Atlantic and take night school. Um, I've been to several of their classes. You know, it depends on what your style is. You like method acting. Do you like the, the mammoth style of acting? Do you, which I don't know what's the name for it. Mammoth? Ma mammoth and Macy's. Yeah, no, I don't know what mammoth Macy's is. They have this whole thing that they don't believe that, that you need to really be emotionally involved as an actor. You just need to look like you're emotionally involved. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's actually really, it really works. I've seen it in action, and it's actually pretty cool. But um, regardless, um, there are plenty of good places that you can be studying. Um, do everything you can. You're going to make friends really fast. I know that. Do everything you can to get comp tickets from those people and go to as many shows as you can. Because chances are, if you're a theater person, you're going to be friends with a lot of other theater persons, and they're going to. And they're going to be doing shows, working on shows, have a friend of a friend of a friend who, who's opening a show at the Cherry Lane or the Second Stage or Playwright Horizons or, or the Public or wherever, where have you. There's going to be a million good places to go. They're all going to be off Broadway. Um, and they're going to get comp tickets. And they're going to offer you them, and you're going to take them. And you're going to go to these shows. And if you get a chance to go to an invited dress, go there. Rug elbows with people. Most of these people are not scary. They're not like you meet people that you think are going to be like, I mean, like you just think would just be like so intimidating. I I, I worked with um, F. Murray. <laughs> Anybody know who F. Murray? You know who he is, yes. right? Yes. Anybody seen the movie Amadeus? Yes. Okay, yeah, that guy. <laughs> um, I worked with him for the last show that I did in New York. Um, and of course, you know, he, he brings in his, his Skagen work or um, good luck during the show. So we, we would hide his Oscar all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it was totally awesome. But like, we would just be sitting there and one day we started talking about reading books. And so the next day he brings me his copy of Hemingway's short stories. I'm like, here, you need to look at this. And so I'm reading it, and every day he's asking me questions about Hemingway. <laughs> so I'm just like, hey, just a normal dude. And his wife would make us brownies or, or lasagna, and he would bring it. I mean, it was wonderful. But, but all that to say, just meet people. It's really all I can say. You're gonna, you have to become kind of a publicity hound. Um, and you'll meet people who are really good at it. And watch them and learn from them. So that's kind of my my drawn out answer to you. Is of course you're going to know people. You're going to know you're going to meet more people. But the thing too is just keep yourself out there. Keep yourself going and keep yourself going to see new things, meet new people. And some of it's not going to be related at all. So keep yourself going to openings, to art gallery openings, um, looking through the museums. And don't be afraid that whenever you bump into somebody that looks vaguely familiar, to introduce yourself and say hi. Now, I mean, you know, it's, it's New York, so not everybody's going to respond well to that. But, but, but just, you just got to be moved. So that, that's what I would say. Um, and I would also say you need to have a commitment to what it is you're doing. And I think you, you know that. Um, you, you've got to be able to go and say that I'm not going to settle for being a secretary this company um, to pay the bills. Like, I, I need to be acting. You, you have to at some point say that. Um, and and this, this is like a general note. This is like something that I just want to say to everybody and it, that reminded me of it. Um, when I left here, I made a list for myself. Um, I made a list of the things that I wanted to do. 
goals that I had. It was like lifetime goals and short-term goals. Um, it wasn't very long. Um, and I even stated explicitly how I was going to get from point A to point B. I forgot about this list. Um, I put it together. Uh, I think I pulled it out again, um, maybe whenever I left Alaska, and then put it away and forgot about it all over again. Maybe yeah, I think I added a couple things to it at that point, a couple things off. I woke up sometime this semester and was like, okay, so you said you said that you were going to be a designer. And you said you were going to be a designer by starting off as a carpenter, working as a technical director, using a technical director as a springboard into design, and using design as a springboard into, into directing. Right now I'm designing after being a technical director who started as a carpenter, leaving here. So I've only got one more step left in my set of stated goals that I had for myself that I've never thought about since I wrote them. My point is, is write these things down. Write them down. Because someday you're going to read it and you're going to be surprised. And anything that you can say out loud to yourself is going to hold you to that. So you say, I'm going to be an actor. You don't say, I'm going to try, I'm going to audition, I'm going to go to New York and try and make it as an actor. You know, you go and you say, I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to go, and I'm, maybe I'm just acting in some two-bit, off, 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 off Broadway show about chipmunks. I <laughs> you might, but you act. And that's the important thing. It's not about what you make, it's not about the money you make. But, but make that list, make it for yourself. And, and pull it out, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. I have several other things on the list that I'm hoping come true. I'm hoping that I keep doing, and I hope I keep moving to. But I, I just want to say that um, very clearly, in no uncertain terms. Say what it is you want, and you'll be surprised at how many of the things you actually want, you actually get. So that's kind of, that's what I think about going to New York. Be clear with yourself. And don't try and live in Manhattan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Live so, in Brooklyn. Uh, we're, my roommate's already up there, and she's going to grad school in Columbia, and we're looking, she's looking at places, and she's found some new places, places on the Upper West Side, not in Spanish Harlem. <laughs> on the Upper West Side, like on 50 something? So, yeah, somewhere in there. But she's found some good deals on some of those, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's good stuff up there. There's good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, if you're in Ohio, if you're on the north side of the island, you're usually okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, we have an aspiring playwright here. Yeah? Any, any ideas for her? Uh, for playwriting? Um, well, first of all, you just produce. Just keep making stuff. Um, and that actually goes with everyone. Um, I, I, got, I got told by one of my advisors this last semester, I was trying to create this poetry project that I was talking about. I really didn't know what it was going to be when I started. The idea was to kind of start off ambiguous and, and let it become whatever it was going to become. Um, but one of the big discussions we had was, was talking about self-censoring. And that as an artist, you need to make sure that no matter what, whatever's up here gets out into the world somehow. So if you have an idea, write it down. If you have a picture in your head, draw it. If you have a theme that you uh, a line sounds a certain way, record it. Write it down. Write the inflections down. Put this stuff and get it out of your head. Um, because the way she explained it to me is that we all are working up in the kitchen, and our subconscious is, is brooding and kicking some stuff around down in the basement. And every time that we get new ideas and new information, we stuff it down in the basement, and your subconscious is going through it, creating new stuff and making new things, and what we run into as artists is we sit there and we're banging on the door, like yelling at our subconscious, give me something, give me something, I, I gotta create, I, I gotta make this show next week, I gotta come up with a good idea, I gotta do, and what you want is you want your subconscious to be throwing stuff up your stairs. You don't have to do it. But the way you make that happen is every time you have an idea, you never stop yourself from writing it down. You never get, never stop yourself from getting it out. Because it's the first time you censor yourself, it's the first time that you don't get stuff done about. So that's my first advice, is just write everything that comes to mind. 
write plays, write short stories, write snippet poems, little bits of conversation. I mean, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what your process is, but but do it all and keep doing. And the second thing is, is let everybody read it. Like everybody. Not just the two. You, 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 you give it to someone and you say, look at this, what do you think? What do you think this play is? Like, what, do, what are the strong points? What are the weak points? What, what, how can we make this work? And eventually you're going to run into somebody who goes, this is awesome, can I do it? And you let them do it. I mean, unless, unless it's like 20 years from now and you're famous and you've won a Tony and then, you know, then you get to choose who does your show. But for right now, for right now, let everybody read it and somebody is going to get touched. And whenever you touch someone and then you have that discussion, then you can have an open discussion about where you need to go as a writer. Because playwriting is, is notoriously difficult. It's all about the show on stage. It's not about the words on the yeah. page, right? So it's like hard to translate that. But that's why you need other people to read it. Because it's not about what you say, it's about what it means. It's like what it means when it was out in the air. So, you know, write it, start working on, how much longer do you have? Here. A uh, year. Year? Perfect. Next year, you start getting everybody in this room and you start having reading of your poems. Start making a deadline for yourself of like, okay, every two weeks, I'm going to have a revision draft and we're going to sit down as a group in class or for over lunch and we're going to read it. And I'm going to hear what it sounds like out loud because you might be surprised with some of the things that you didn't think are working or working great, some of the things you thought, oh, that's perfect, it's not going to sound right. So that's the biggest thing as a playwright. It's just keep going. And that's, I mean, that of course goes for everybody in every capacity, but especially playwrights. Um, so let everybody read it. And, you know, if you have something, email it to me and I'll read it. Okay. I like it. We're actually doing my senior performance in, the, in February, and we're going to do my original play. Nice. So. Awesome. That's exciting. Well, good luck with it. Um, I wanted to I wanted to say one more thing about about putting your work out there, and I'm sorry guys, I I, I could like literally talk all day. So, um, but I do want to say this part. Um, anybody familiar with Anne Bogart? Some of you are. Anybody Anne Bogart uh, viewpoint, um, the Suzuki method, um, phenomenal director. Um, and also, um, very profound woman. Um, I, I, I haven't met her yet. I'm supposed to work with her next January. But she's coming to our school to do a, um, do a re envisioning of a Christmas Carol. So I'm hoping I get to be involved with that next year. Um, but if you, guys don't, if you guys don't know who Ann Bogart is, I recommend a book called The Director Prepared. Um, do you have a copy of that? I have a copy of my show. Um, I've read most of it. Um, and regardless of who you are, it, it, it says the director prepares, but it's for everyone. You don't even have to be in theater to read it. Um, amazing book. But one of the things that she will tell you, and there's a couple of things in there that she tells you that you need to take to heart. One of them I was just going to speak to is about embarrassment. And there's a whole chapter in there called Embarrassment. And that it's your job as an artist, whether you're a designer, an actor, a director, even a backstage technician, there should be a certain amount of embarrassment in the things you do. You should, you should have enough invested in everything you do that you're not 100% sure about putting it on stage. There's that part of you that says, I don't know if I can bear that much of my soul on stage comfortably. And you should always be uncomfortable when you do it very important part of what we do. And it's very hard to bridge that gap because as a designer, sometimes it's so easy just to be like, you know, that's what a 16th century building looks like, so that's what you're going to get. And you don't have to put any of yourself in it at all. And it should never be that way. But the more important thing that comes out of that book is there's a whole section, and I'm not just going to paraphrase it, but she says, do not wait. Don't wait for the right financial situation, for the right emotional situation, where you have the right place for it to happen, the right people, where you have the right 
frame of reference, the right script, the right actors, don't wait for those things to happen because you're never going to have enough money. You're never going to be comfortable. You're never going to have that time. You're never going to feel like you're right there. You're always going to feel like you're pushing for more than you can do. But don't wait because the, every time you wait, you make it a little less to yourself. And this is going to stagger with another part from someone else, but to say, you're known for what you do, and it feeds right in. And some people think that there's some sort of like period in life that we have to like pay our dues and like do X, Y, and Z, the stuff that I don't want to do, so that you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, or even six months from now, I can do the things that I really want to do. Like I'm a director, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna do this other side work. To pay the bill, and whenever I get, whenever I you know get my house paid for, whenever I finally settle down and get married, whenever I, I move to that city that I, I know I'm going to live in, then I'll start directing. Then I'll start spending my time. No, you can't do that because you'll be known for what you do. And so you need to make sure that if you really want to be an artist, if you really want to be an actor, a director, designer, manager, carpenter. Whatever, do it every day. Do it every chance you get because in the end that's what defines you. And that is how you're going to become the person you want to be, is by doing it all the time. So that's why I say don't like make be clear with yourself. You want to be an actor? Be an actor every day. If you don't get paid, you know, go stand on the street corner and just start performing monologues for passersby. So I mean, might give you a quarter, Lisa. Yeah. Hey. I performed on New York Street. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh -huh. that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to throw that out there. And, and, and sometimes that's really hard. Um, and I know it was for me. Um, because I'll be honest, when I left here, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I, where I was going, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. But I wish that I would have had the good sense when I was here to take advantage of the things that I could have done. You could go and you could do a one act on the fountain, out in front of the library. Do a flash mob one day. Just get everybody together and, and, and create just some sort of project. Just everything you can do to be visible and get in front of people and learn what people want and don't want and what they respond to, you're going to become a better person. And there are plenty of resources here to do that with. Even though you might have a community that doesn't seem that supportive sometimes, they are supportive. I mean, but there's just not a lot of people here, so, you know, when you've got an auditorium just the size of most operas, I mean, you're never going to fill the house with, with the show, but that doesn't mean that people don't care. And it doesn't mean that you can't be doing things. You can come in these rooms and, you know, do a play in here with only three people watching. I mean, it's, it's okay. Anyway, so, so whatever it is you want to do, just do it. It really comes down to that. And, you know, whatever you want to do, just do it. Just, just but he's not saying, I'm only going to act, so I, therefore I do not, do not have to build sets. Not an undergraduate. Actually, no, it should never be. That's like I said, you should never ever say, this is not my job. I, 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 I did say that. So, <laughs> I mean, um, I, I know how you guys feel about, well, I don't know exactly, but I, 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 I remember how I felt about having to do everything when I was here. It's like, oh, how much time do you think I have? God, I'll never be. It'll so, never change. It never change. And you know what? I, I haven't I haven't had a day off since sometime before spring break um, this year. And before that I hadn't had a day off since Christmas break. So I, I get like one day off every like two and a half months or something like that. Um and most days I'm working at least eight hours, if, if not more. Um, and some of it doesn't feel like work because I'm just reading scripts, and sometimes it really feels like work because I'm painting stuff black. Uh, but, 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 but I want to say, like, like it, one of the things that you will be, have to be hard time, hard pressed to be prepared for is how much work this stuff really is. Um, what was that? You say you think you know. She has no idea. 
Um, you do have an idea, but just to say, yeah, you do what you want, you make sure, but keep in mind too, and enduring the things that you want to do. Always trying to keep things in perspective, that sometimes one job that you do leads to the next. And that every time you say it and you do something, you make that part of your name. So if you, every time you tell somebody no, which is going to become really important when you're in New York. Because, especially in that community, and especially if you ever want to get into TV and film, you don't ever say no to people. You, you can maybe turn down a day's worth of work, but if you don't work for a week, you're going to have to, you're going to be set back months trying to get your contacts back in order. Because once people stop calling you, it's hard to get them to start calling you again. And, and so, and that's a very extreme example, but, but it's why if you have the resources to spend one more hour helping somebody paint something, build something, help them look over their script, or help them run lines, like it's never gonna be a bad thing. You use every ounce, every minute of the day you've got. Um, even doing things that you don't wanna do. But don't ever let the things that you don't wanna do Make it so that you can't do the things that you do want to do. That's the important thing. Um, uh, <laughs> um, what I really want to do is I want to get to the costuming and fashion design. Would you yeah. recommend that uh, once I'm done here, there's a school, a fashion school in Dallas that I'm looking at. Would you recommend doing something like that or going to a grad program and actually going to the grad program? What do you want to do? Like, you want to do fashion design, or yeah. do you want to do theater costume Both. design? Both? Yeah. Um, they're really worlds apart. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't want to discourage you. When, um, my girlfriend is a costume designer, so I, I hear the blunt of it in terms of what the difference is between costume design and fashion design. They share a lot of similarities, um, but the worlds are, are about as far apart as you can get. Um, You don't need a degree to be a designer. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to go to grad school to be a designer. Either one, fashion or whatever. So I would say, instead of going to an institute, like I would assume it's a fashion institute, mm -hmm. like a, um, or even grad school, I, I would recommend going and trying to get a job as, as an assistant costume designer or or trying to get on as a production assistant at a, at a runway show, or anything to get you into the world, because you need you need to know which one's which. Um, because I think they're both cool, and I think that they're very very much related. But depending on which way you go, it's really going to inform how you move your career. Um, because I'm not because obviously at Santa Fe last year. Um, Apparently Tom Ford designed, um, I don't remember which show, but he designed, he did a costume design for the show there. Um, and that happens every once in a while. You, you, see, you see fashion designers coming into theater. Um, but what you're doing as a costume designer is not the same thing. Um, so I would just recommend that you you go out and you get a part, be a part of this stuff and start figuring out because I think you're gonna find that one of them suits you and one of them doesn't. Like I'm not saying, I'm saying that you might end up being a fashion designer and then well, later on decide that you wanna do a costume design or you may decide that you really like costume design and every once in a while you're doing some fashion things but, but I don't think it's a career that you can sustain um, without, uh, that block. I, I, did, I mean, and, and believe me, I, I, I don't want to be the person to tell you don't do it. Because there's probably a way. Probably a way for you to do it. Probably a way for you to get involved with both. But you need to do some research in order to do that. Um, so, but, but, but my advice stands is I, I don't know that, I don't know that I would, I would go to either. And I, I would, I would probably choose the institute of grad school if I were you. And before that, I, I would go and do the, the not fun internship PA stuff where you don't get paid anything and work forever. 
but you get a workaround like, you know, like, I don't know, some sort of like fashion festival in Chicago or, or Denver or LA or whatever. Um, and for you especially, I think you realize this, but you're gonna have to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Dallas is about as close as you're gonna get if you wanna do fashion. And even that stretching, probably need to go to LA. Yeah. Um, so I should <laughs> throw that out there. Um, We're not known for a style here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever's comfortable is pretty much the style around here. <laughs> um, but but um, I think it's great to know where you are. And, and, and the one, thing, one thing that kind of goes with that is if you, don't, if you have two things, there's nothing wrong with doing both and, and trying to just carve out your own niche. Because you, you never know. I mean, you were saying like between a TD and a lighting designer, it's a pretty common thing. More than likely, you'd be like a TD and a master electrician, or a lighting designer and a set designer. Um, but um, but it's pretty common to see people who have multiple interests because you don't see people that do one thing and then they're like, oh, well, you know, I just I just paint stuff. I don't like to do anything else. Like it never happens. Yeah, is that true? Of how, how that kind of plays out. One of the one of the guys that I worked with a couple times, he's starting to make a, a name for himself. Um, it's David Corin. Um, I don't know if anybody knows the name. Um, you should look up his website. It's uh, C O R I N S David Corin. I believe that's right. Can't remember if it's C or K, but C O R I N S. Yeah. It might be with a K, just so you know. Um, but look at his website. Um, he's a scene designer. He's probably, he's probably 34, 35. Um, he's done some major off-Broadway shows, some, some major conferences, um, owns a club, has a wife and two children, all before he's 35. Um, and the club he designed, of course. Um, so, so just to say, like, your interests are going to vary, and don't be afraid to like spread out. Like, be like, oh well, I like costume design, but, but you know, every once in a while, I like to design dresses for my friends whenever they go out, or I like design suit jackets, um, or I don't, I don't know what you like in terms of fashion, um, but or or even costume. But you know, like, if whatever it is, just do it. No, no, you don't have to have a job title to, to be a designer. You just design things. That's, that's what makes you a designer. Now, if people pay for it, so much the better, right? <laughs> but, but they don't have to pay you to be used as a designer. So that could be who you are. Any other questions of Grant? Is there a place for a graphic designer? Is there what? Is there a place for a graphic designer? I mean, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like, whenever I think more of the professional world, they would turn to actual design firms. No. Does that make sense? Or do they hire a graphic designer singly for their niche? Does that make sense? Um, or a design team? Uh, well, it's been my experience that. Um, there's somebody who is uh, publicity, PR, um, whatever their administrative title is, whether it be like the publicity director or the, the PR, um, PR assistant or, or, or whatever, I don't know. Um, and that's usually the graphic designer for all the things. Um, but they're usually not graphic designers, which is really unfortunate. Because then why do we sometimes we have like, we have certain designs I think some really bad folks to design and some really bad um, brochures and, and stuff. So there's definitely a place for it. Um, but no, not very many theaters are going to have the resources to hire you know, the graphic designer outright. Right. Um, I, will, I will say this, though. Um, graphic design plays into every single part of, like, as a visual designer. Graphic 
graphic design has become so important to me, and I'm not trained in it. I, mean, I don't know enough about it. I'm learning as I go. But all my work is starting to be digital. And because I'm starting to send people like a, like a poster, essentially, online of like, this is what my ideas are, graphic design becomes so important because I need to like direct their eye through this work to tell them the story that I'm trying to convey. Um, without actually being there, sitting in front of them, holding a, an actual painting and saying like, oh, well, you know, this is my idea, I'm just color this or whatever. So graphic design starts playing in how you do that. And so I think it's really, really important that everybody has a sense of graphic design. But like as of being like just a graphic designer, um, Is that what you were looking yeah, at? Like just wanting to be graphic? Oh, uh, no. I, well, I'm actually looking more toward public relations. Public relations? Yeah. Perfect. And Perfect. then hopefully having the extra design skill. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of, you know, going off of that, um, I can definitely key off. Um, one thing I, I will say this, and, and, and it's very important because I'm starting to figure this out. Um, like I, I keep saying, it's, our world is moving into this technology based. Um, communication. I mean, everybody's got some sort of smartphone, you know, like a, an iPhone or a Blackberry, and they've got internet 24-7, wireless whenever you're in the coffee shop. Um, every, all your photos are now digital. Like, who has taken a roll of film to the store to be developed in the past? Oh, yeah? I'm actually impressed, because that, that doesn't ever happen. Um, like, your own stuff, or was it for... <laughs> but it doesn't happen very often. I mean, nobody does it. I mean, I'm like, it, it, it actually like has to be a conscious choice to say I'm still going to use film because it gives me something that digital doesn't have. That's totally fine. But, but by and large, all the information that we're starting to share is digital. Um, so whenever I talk to my directors, when I talk to other designers, whenever I talk to TD, when I was a TD and I was talking to all these people, when I was talking to Carpenter, there was not one thing that I can remember that was really done by hand. I mean, I'm not saying we don't still make models. We still do some hand drafting. We don't do much hand drafting anymore. We still make models. We still do some hand rendering. Um, we still, you know, the directors tend to still give you a script with a whole bunch of pencil marks to it. No change in some things, but, but digital stuff becomes very important. So for those of you who still have some time left, I highly recommend finding some way to learn the programs that are relevant to what you need. And for all of you, learning Adobe, the Adobe Suite, is going to be incredibly important. Learn Photoshop, Illustrator, um, I, I don't even use that, there's open source versions of them. I, I use um, program called GIMP and uh, Scragger, which are desktop publishing and photo manipulation. They're open source, so they're free, which is why I, I like them, because they're free. Um, learn how to use this stuff, because it's going to be very, very important for you. Um, if you want to be a TD, you need to learn how to draft. And, and just trust me, I learned how to draft last semester on a computer. I could hand draft before that, I learned how to use AutoCAD last semester. Yeah, I was just about to ask that. Is it good for you to be trained in CAD if you're interested in being a pet designer? Is what now? To be trained in CAD? Yeah. Is that important? Well, um, there, there, there's a bit weird kind of push these days. Um, the old school would say that yes, you need AutoCAD as, as, a, as a technician. You need to know how to draw an AutoCAD. I would say no matter what, you need to know how to manipulate. Like if, if somebody gives you a file, an AutoCAD file, you need to know how to open it, how to get the dimensions <laughs> off of it that you want, how to um, um, how to look at the different views, how to move around in that drawing. You need to learn how to do that with AutoCAD. But in terms of actually using it for your drafting, um, AutoCAD or Vectorworks will probably be okay. I um, mean, you can get a student version of Vectorworks for free. Um, you can download it with a good, um, well, it, yeah, you can download it with a good internet connection. Um, so 
So either one of those can be either or. We have this weird thing in my school where um, all the computers in online in the system have been moved over to a Mac, mm -hmm. and AutoCAD does not run on a Mac. Um, it's stationary. I don't know that, but Vector was does. Um, so we have this weird thing where we have people coming in who only know how to use VectorWorks, and then the professors would harp on them saying they need to learn how to use AutoCAD. And there's only one lab in the building that has computers with AutoCAD on it. And after they do their drawings, then they have to convert them back to VectorWorks mm -hmm. to be able to give it to the shop. And so I would say that you're better off just learning VectorWorks, probably. Um, because there's also some programs that use vector works for lighting. Yeah, you can plug the lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is that Ovation? Is that it? Ovation system. Yes. Yeah, Ovation. Yeah. And, you can change and render way. works, maybe? Yeah. Um, it's really it's worth your time. I mean, it's worth your time, you know. Um, but but there's also some, a, a lot of, um, I, I'm starting to get into like 3D um, building. Um, and, and, and is the least complex that I can. Um, there was, of course, like AutoCAD 3D Builder, uh, AutoCAD 3D, um, there are all kinds of 3D. You can do vector work 3D, certainly. Um, you have to for the lighting stuff. Um, but what I'm using right now is I'm using um, Google SketchUp. Um, uh, yeah. It's hard. Lisa and I took that workshop. It's, 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 so it's like, once you get the hang of it, when we get done, if you still around, I can show you. I can show you my model for Scottish play. I actually end up building the theater um, in SketchUp and then putting all my stuff and beats in it so I can look at it. And now they have a way that you can do photo quality renderings off of your 3D model with light, so I can like set light and sources in it and make it look like a photograph. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, so I guess all that to say is the other thing too is, is I would say especially starting out here um, and probably no matter where you go in the future, you're going to find yourself doing a lot of long distance collaborations. You're going to be on the phone a lot. You're going to email a lot. You're going to start using Skype. You're going to start using GChat. Um, you're going to you're going to be trying struggling with ways to how can I tell someone who's across the country what my ideas are. Like, how do you do that? And, and in, a, in a way that makes sense and doesn't, and doesn't devalue the work. And so, because, I mean, there's definitely a, a school of thought that says, like, your rendering has this, like, artistic touch to them. And so you don't want to, like, devalue that, that, that touch, whatever it is, by putting it through the computer. It doesn't read. It's not always true. So you have to find that balance. Um, so I would say that everybody needs to learn how to use these digital photo manipulations, especially. Learn how to make your own posters. Learn how to do your own graphic design. Learn how to do desktop publishing. Um, especially because we were talking about portfolios earlier. Like I said, a lot of those times, there are um, publishers in-house, so you'll take your own desktop publishing, lay out your entire book, and then send it to someone who will print it for you. Um, and that's, that's, I mean, it, it's complicated, but it's actually not particularly hard. It's not particularly expensive. Um, so anyway, so so everybody, if you have a chance, look into that stuff. I don't know if the school has classes. I know that the technology center has classes in some of that, especially Photoshop um, and AutoCAD, probably VectorWorks as well. Um, so if if you have some time, look into it. Just 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 look into it because you're going to find it's going to become more and more useful as you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, my, my brain is like crazy from the test semester. My learning curve has been like I learned like four different computer programs this semester, um, which so it's like I learned how to do photo manipulation. Um, I learned how to use a 3D rendering program, um, and then I, I also learned how to use SketchUp very well this semester, and I also learned. And something else. So, like, <laughs> talking about technology, it's like all of a sudden I started to realize that there's so much we can do with it that we don't do yet. So, so take the opportunity to learn it. 
um, because I think it'll serve you very, very well. And especially if you have the skill to always be your leg up on the competition. Yes, Pam. Mark me on it. <laughs> I have issues with computers sometimes I'm working on it though. I am an aspiring yeah. set designer and seeing here. Yeah. So I'm working on it. I just I'm not very comfortable with computers, so that's something I'm really gonna It's it's hard. I mean yeah. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. It's it's not it's not mandatory for design. Yeah, it's, I know. it's not quite there yet. Yeah. But even if you like doing everything by hand, like if you like doing your rendering by hand, you like doing your models by hand, mm -hmm. um, your drafting by hand, I, I would encourage you to find ways to get that from the original into your computer and then be able to pretty content it. I mean, not saying that you should ever replace it, but you need a, should have a scanner big enough to be able to take it in your hand draft and to play it. Um, you know, um, and that, so, so I, I do think that's really important. So like, don't, don't, stress out, stress, yeah, don't stress out about having to use everything on the computer. Yeah. But you need to learn how to use it well enough to, uh, to transfer your information mm -hmm. effectively. Any other questions? Uh, but if you guys want, um, I also have my design presentation from from the Scottish play that I can show you. I just gave that yesterday, so it's it, it's where it is, um, and I can show you some of my my three models um, as well. Great, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah.